medical news and research from University of Utah physicians and specialists you can use for a happier and healthier life. You're listening to The Scope. Radiation. It's a scary word that calls up visions of nuclear bombs, exploding nuclear power plants. But radiation is a term for a kind of energy that goes from one place to another, like infrared radiation that keeps us warm, ultraviolet radiation that makes vitamin D in our skin, and the visual spectrum that lets us see the world around us. But let's go back to radiation of sorts that we have more questions about. Microwave radiation, big power line radiation, and electromagnetic radiation from that little device that we hold next to our bodies all day long, our cell phones. What about this kind of radiation and pregnancy? This is Dr. Kirtley Jones from the Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology at University of Utah Healthcare. Today on The Scope, we'll be talking with Patty Wood in New York City, who is the Executive Director of Grassroots Environmental Education and a visiting scholar at Adelphi University's School of Nursing and Public Health. And she's going to help us try to think about exposures in pregnancy to cell phone radiation. So welcome to The Scope, Ms. Wood. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be with you. So, uh, so Patty, tell me a little bit about what might be the concerns about the kind of electromagnetic radiation that comes from cell phones in pregnancy. What, what do we know or what are we worried about? Most people have never really thought about what, what this is, what's making those cell phones actually work. But radio frequency waves have been used for, you know, for more than 100 years. Um, and this was when we actually were able to have these small receivers in our homes called radios and those distant transmitting towers. The technology offered today by the wireless industry puts these same powerful transmitters as well as receivers much closer to us than we think they should be. It's actually the two-way communication using this type of RFR or radio frequency radiation that is the reason for concern. And people who are carrying a cell phone with them when they have it on so they can receive calls, they may not know that they are constantly exposed to this radiation every minute because your little cell phone while waiting to get a call is always signaling where you are. So That's it's correct. on all the time. That's right. Then you are actually receiving and transmitting all the time. So tell us a little bit about what the concerns are, and in particular in pregnancy. Since we do use these ubiquitously, and these cell phone towers are now, you know, becoming, you know, closer and closer to us as well, we are dealing with something that we have actually never seen before. It's a perfect example of how technology gets out ahead of science. And we're way out with the technology, and the science is really trying hard to catch up here. So, so do we, we have some animal models? Our Baby Safe Project, which is a project just to educate pregnant women about the safe use of wireless technology during their pregnancy actually was inspired by the work of Dr. Hugh Taylor, who's the chair of the Department of Obstetrics, Gynecology, and Reproductive Sciences at Yale University. And he and his team of researchers actually did mouse studies where they found that the prefrontal cortex of the offspring of the pregnant mice who were exposed to very typical cell phone radiation levels actually were wired differently. That could be reason for concern because we have so much of these uh, these neurobehavioral problems in our children today. I, I think the latest statistic is one in five, anything from ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, you know, just behavioral problems, uh, even autism. Mm-hmm. In fact, there's a researcher at Yale, Dr. Martha Herbert, whose sole focus of her research is the link between cell phone radiation or wireless radiation in general and, and autism. Did they put the phones like right next to the mouse or did they put it across the room from the mouse? No, the actual, the cell phones were, were placed on top of a cage. Mm-hmm. And they actually had a, a control group where there was a cell phone that was turned off placed on another cage. And they actually were able to look at not only the behavior of the children, I mean the children of the offspring, but they were also able to look at the structure, the brain structure of these, uh, of these offspring. And do um, we have and- any data from 
humans yet? Absolutely no data from humans. In fact, the team at Yale is very interested in doing primate studies next. Mm -hmm. This would bring this closer, you know, to the human model. They were able to show that, you know, like, like I said before, that they had different electrical activity in their prefrontal cortex, which is the area of the brain that controls these behaviors that we just spoke about. So Mm -hmm. what are your recommendations in terms of a precautionary story? Say, well, we're not sure what's going to happen in humans, but it seems like it would be wise to take a precaution. Well, you know, when you're talking about precaution, I mean, this is, this is what guides much of our work is the precautionary principle, which states that if there is an indication of harm, that precautionary measures could be taken even without scientific certainty. And this is certainly a, a, an area where I would employ that. Generally speaking, proximity is the most important factor in determining the amount of wireless radiation to which you and your baby are exposed. The radiation levels will actually fall off pretty dramatically as you distance yourself from the source. We're just recommending avoiding, you know, carrying your cell phone directly on your body, not in a pocket, not in a bra, not in a bag that you carry, you know, on you all the time. If you have to carry it, we recommend that you actually just turn the phone around so that the back of the phone, which is where the antenna is, is actually facing out. Obviously, don't place your cell phone or your wireless laptop or tablet on your abdomen. I know that it's a convenient spot when you have that big bump there. (laughs) You know, if you're lying down, you just kind of, you know, to prop up your computer there, but probably not a great idea. And then we advise talking on speaker setting or with an air tube headset. We really recommend that you avoid using cordless phones as well because a cordless phone gives you about the same amount of radiation as a cell phone does. We strongly advise that people have, you know, at least a couple of places in their home where they're talking on a a hardwired or landline phone, Mm -hmm. um, which of course presents zero risk. Speakerphone allows you to put the phone at several feet away. That's right. And that's excellent. I mean, you you really even begin to see radiation levels fall off at, you know, a few inches. Uh So, I mean, the further away you get it, the, you know, the safer you are. The technology is moving so fast that we're, we're beginning to replace our old analog utility meters now. So yet another, you know, exposure to try to avoid. I mean, if your bed is right up against the wall, you know, which has these smart meters on the other side of it, we would strongly advise that you just move your bed or even move it into another room so that you're not like right there. Unplugging your home Wi-Fi router every single night should just be routine. Like you lock your doors, you turn off your lights and the router goes off too. Oh, now I have one last little question because although we're talking about women and pregnancy, I'm a fertility doctor and I always Mm -hmm. think about my men. So Mm -hmm. what about those guys who carry their cell phones in their pockets right next to their testicles? We actually have um, quite a few studies linking cell phone exposure to harmful effects on sperm. And they've actually been done here in this country as well as Australia and some European countries and South Africa in particular. But they've used, you know, very diverse methodologies and they've, you know, compared sperm counts and sperm health in men who wore cell phones on their hips, you know, those who carry them other places on their bodies or didn't use them at all. Um, And they actually saw a a real difference in those men who were wearing their cell phones on their hips or in their pockets. It's just something that you would probably try to avoid if you could. Yeah, be careful with your man parts. Be careful with your man parts. (laughs) We've been talking with Patty Wood. Uh, who is the executive director of Grassroots Environmental Education, and she has her own radio show and a website. Patty, can you give that to our listeners? Babysafeproject.org. Babysafeproject.org. Dot org. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of scientific studies on there and um, a lot of um, helpful information about, you know, what you can do to just reduce those exposures. And a website for your grassroots environmental organization? Right. And our nonprofit website is grassrootsinfo, as in information, I-N-F-O dot org. So that's grassrootsinfo dot org. Well, thank you so much, and I'm going to even carry my cell phone farther away than I currently do in my purse. But thank you so much for joining us, and everyone who's listening, and thank you for joining us on The Scope. We're your daily dose of science, conversation, medicine. This is The Scope, University of Utah Health Sciences Radio.